Uh, hello everyone, it's Susie, Acker Crypto Granny here. I hope you're all well, looking after yourself, being kind to yourself, being kind to your family and friends, being kind to your beautiful putty cats, uh, whatever animal you have, and just making this life and world better. Now don't forget we uh, will have that Kobo Wallet Vault uh, up for grabs. We've got three going, so please do subscribe and leave a great comment, okay? Now, I did a video today and a lot of people were asking me about the lack of liquidity in XRP and I needed to find out what that was about because it just doesn't make a lot of sense. Some people were saying it came from Brad Garlinghouse. So I just want to go through uh, exactly the article and I'll give you my comments on it. Now, on Sunday, the 6th of September, uh, European Central Time, I'm going to be doing a live YouTube. So please do come. Uh, to YouTube, ask me any questions you want. Uh, it can be Ripple focused or XRP or whatever you want it want, uh, and we'll talk about this. But I'm just going to comment on this particular video, okay? Uh, sorry, this particular uh, article from Modern Consensus, and it was published. Just going down, it was published on the 25th by a fellow called Leo uh, Jacobson. I think it's um, it's just confusing a lot of people in terms of whether XRP has liquidity or not. Now, XRP, let's put it in perspective here. XRP has more liquidity than any other cryptocurrency out there, okay? Now, liquidity is different to volume. You can have volume on the buy side, you can have volume on the sell side. But if the buyer and seller don't meet each other with a proper price, right? The price can be very wide, for example, the buyer wants to buy at a dollar and the seller wants to sell at two dollars. If they don't agree, they will both sit on the volume side of each of that bid and offer. In other words, the buyer won't transact because they want to buy at a dollar and the seller won't transact because they want to sell at two dollars. So the volume is a completely different story to what liquidity is, okay? Volume just means there's volume and there's no liquidity, even though there's, you know, 100 million on the buy side and 120 million on the sell side because the buyer and the seller cannot agree the price of XRP. And it's completely different liquidity versus the volume, right? And that's the thing. Liquidity is looked at and I've done... I've done YouTube's on, sorry, I've done videos on this in some of my courses on Udemy. Volume and liquidity are totally different uh, stories, okay? Liquidity is when you have a very narrow uh, buy sell price. In other words, there's hardly any cost to buying and selling uh, in terms of XRP. So if you made a mistake and you bought XRP, you might have bought, bought it at 0 0.26775, you made a mistake and you have to get out of it, then your offer, the sell side, is going to be less than the buy side and it could be 0.26770 rather than 0.26775, okay? And that's really important to know, okay? And that's what we're talking about here. And let's go into this line by line. Uh, yes, Ripple is a company, a very profitable company. Some of the valuations have been more than 10 billion or so, absolutely. And they do have a lot of customers, just not in, not banks, just not banks, but every every other one, every other type of customer, okay, whether it's an export company, import, whatever it might be. Um, the business is not a blockchain, okay, that's number number one. It's not a blockchain like Bitcoin and Ethereum, which are proof of work. That's the first thing, right? Where Ethereum and Bitcoin are proof of work and the cost of dealing and mining Ethereum and Bitcoin cost a fortune because the electricity being used, which is basically, you know, literally to power seven nuclear plants, but also when Bitcoin and Ethereum that use the same miners get busy and they have to validate transactions and uh, store the whole blockchain, every miner, the costs get even more and more. And that's why it is costly. And that's why the fees go up. So like, the first thing I will say is XRP and Ripple, R Ripple's ODL is not uh, a mining cryptocurrency. You don't mine it. And it's not 
a proof of work, which Bitcoin and Ethereum are, okay? And it's not a blockchain. Bitcoin and Ethereum add to the blocks. The transactions get added to the block constantly. Uh, Bitcoin, for example, the real Bitcoin that everyone looks at is like, you know, uh, what is it, 10 minutes for every block to be created. And on that block, there might be 4,000 to 500 transactions, but it takes every 10 minutes, okay? And Ethereum's another story. So let's just go through this. Uh, you know, again, when we compare, and I've done a Swift uh, video on this just recently, yesterday, the day before, I did a Ripple uh, excluding XRP and a Ripple net including XRP. Okay, so there's two different things, you know, two different ways that people can use RippleNet without XRP or with XRP as well within RippleNet. Okay, so just going back to this, uh, Swift is owned by the banks, right? And it's very expensive and it costs a fortune, right? A fortune when people are doing anything through Swift overseas or anywhere else, right? Uh, and also they've had major hacks major hacks that keep going on and on and on. So let's just put this in perspective. Again, this is actually incorrect. It's not blockchain. Uh, Ripple Ripple is a digitized ledger technology that does not use blockchain. And that's why it's so fast. And that's why they can do so many transactions per second, uh, 1,500 to 2,000 per second and more with it barely costing you anything. Okay, so that's the first thing. So this is not right. Now, trying to obscure its involvement with the origins of XRP, cryptocurrency regularly referred to as Ripple, despite the company's best efforts to change. I mean, you know, this is already, as far as I'm concerned, written in a negative tone, uh, Leo Jacobson. Very, very annoying. And the thing is, like I said, there's over 4,000 cryptocurrencies out there why don't they always focus on those? No, because XRP sells, you know, news, it sells YouTubes and all sorts of things. But anyway, let's go back to this, right? So if we go overselling XRP brings in hundreds of millions of dollars while driving down the price mark of the token to the detrimental of the retail investors. And again, that is not true. Okay. Now, XRP, as you know, has an escrow and that escrow is is released every month and what doesn't get sold every month to clients or to the exchange goes back into escrow and then becomes the first in last out again so this is not true okay this is not true if you look at xrp futures and options uh, a lot of the inter uh, a lot of the institutional traders can sell futures on xrp which often drives the price down not the fact that Ripple themselves are driving XRP down. That is completely incorrect, okay? It's completely incorrect. Uh, XGrow only gets released and what doesn't get picked up by the uh, investors or the traders or the exchanges goes back into escrow. As I said, first in, uh, last out, right? So then we go on to this thing. The biggest bump in the road company faces is a class action. We know about that. That's been going on forever. There's been a Senate a person that said that it's not a security. It's a utility. It's used within the system of RippleNet as a utility coin. If XRP is used within the simple of, in the uh, system of RippleNet, basically anyone that does cross-border currency or derivatives or whatever, because RippleNet can handle derivatives, any sort of assets, you save yourself 70 cents in the dollar vis-a-vis -vis if you were going through SWIFT, right? That's a fact. So XRP, I would find it very difficult to believe that it could be found to be a security, right? Absolutely. And again, this is very negative against XRP, very negative. To me, when you read this sort of thing, it's never done in an unbiased way. And it just annoys me and erates me, okay? Uh, there's a lot of people that believe that XRP is not a security. And, you know, in, according to the Howey test, it's not a security. It's a utility to get the value out of using RippleNet. If you use XRP, you save 70 cents in the dollar, right? For doing foreign currency, for doing cross-currency swaps, 
for doing any sort of thing that's related to, to foreign currency or even domestic instant settlement. This is not correct. So again, this is all, you know, as far as I'm concerned, just adding to make people worried about uh, Ripple and XRP when, you know, we've heard about this for the last two years. Seriously, this is old news. And then, you know, potentially huge fines. I mean, get real. Seriously, that is just ridiculous and it's there to make a lot of people worried and it's unnecessary because all we've seen is is negative news about Ripple and XRP and it is the best cryptocurrency out there and I'll keep saying that I'll keep saying that until I'm old and gray which I'm you know middle age I'm getting there seriously this is just annoying okay so again this is this this is written very negative okay let's put it in perspective why don't they write this stuff on real scams? And there's a lot of real scams out there. Why doesn't this fellow write about Ethereum Classic, which had another hack this month, had three hacks this month? You know, the coin is at $6.60. It's had three hacks. It caused OKEX to lose $5.6 million in August, okay? It runs the risk of being delisted because it's had 51% attacks on its network, on its technology, and its technology does not work. And yet no one writes about Ethereum Classic or many other thousands of coins I could tell you about. Okay, so again, this is totally negative, And as far as I'm concerned, it's old news, old news. And it's just there to make people worry with all the FUD and the negativity of it. It's not written in a balanced way. So <clears throat> RippleNet has an on-demand liquidity. Yes, that's true. They've called it that now. And under RippleNet, it's got XVIA, as we know, XCurrent, okay? And, you know, the latest, which includes XRP, right? Uh, both ways in and out, right? So RippleNet is a swift killer. That is a fact. Uh, the fees on Swift. Now, I did, a, I did a YouTube on this yesterday. Swift is a nightmare. And I can tell you right now because I've worked with it, right? If a client was doing $5 million on Swift and doing a, a currency that is not well known, it would cost that client anything, probably about $45,000. Where XRP and RippleNet can do it extremely fast, okay? So, you know, this is all bunkin. You know, this is all garbology as far as I'm concerned. Again, XRP is not a blockchain. That is wrong. It's not a blockchain. It's not proof of work. Okay. It has a consensus algorithm that is not based on blockchain. That's what makes it so fast. Um, if people are going to write about XRP and RippleNet, please get your facts right. That's all I can say. Okay. Get your facts right. Swift has monopoly. It's owned by the bank's and they charge corporates and banks a fortune. Anyone can use SWIFT, okay? Big corporate treasuries in Australia and everywhere else use SWIFT, and it's the most expensive old system from 1973, and it has a lot of problems, and you can be hacked, okay? Now, then we go on to this thing. Ripple's network of validators, that's right, is a consensus mechanism, uh, to prove the authenticity of transactions like any other system. This one is so much more efficient because it can do that within a couple of seconds, okay? Within a couple of seconds. Now, they've done 50 million ledgers and never had a hack, never had an error, never had any problem. But yet, I can tell you so many cryptocurrencies out there, including Ethereum, and Ethereum Classic that have had millions and millions of problems. And this is just infuriating to me, okay? So, you know, then we talk about, yes, that's correct. You've got that right. Uh, what is his name again? Mr. Leo. Mr. Leo, that's right. Proof of work causes so much, uh, so many uh, resources to be used in terms of electricity and everything else that it is not eco-friendly and honestly it uses the electricity of a small country okay now ethereum hasn't even gone to proof of stake yet okay it hasn't they're having trouble with it so again get your facts right ethereum is extremely slow in going to proof of stake 
because they're finding there's a lot of problems with going to proof of stake. Okay, a lot of problems. Now, you know, the questioning the technology of Ripple is just stupid. You know, there's more validators than 150. This is not correct. Ripple has over a thousand network validators and 97% of them are, are external to Ripple. Okay, so get your facts right again. Again, 300 clients or more, it's not just 300 clients. As I said before, how many clients do you think American Express has got? How many clients do you think Santander's got? How many clients do you think Standard Charter's got? How many clients do you think the Bank of Thailand's got, the Siam Commercial Bank in Thailand? They have 16 million clients. Ripple focuses on clients like Siam Commercial Bank that have 16 million clients. So Ripple has millions and millions of clients, right? Millions. And if it didn't work, these clients would sue them from here to, to smithereens, right? So what do we got here? Uh, again, you know, traditional institutions have to use, we're talking about a bank, Nostra and Vostra accounts because they never know where F, when FX is going to settle properly through SWIFT and it costs them a fortune, right? And it costs the client that's doing the FX, say an example, the FX transaction, a fortune as well because SWIFT, you never know what's going to happen, right? Now, on-demand liquidity means that the bid offer price is very narrow, right? Very narrow. It doesn't pass via the blockchain. Again, XRP and RippleNet do not use a blockchain. So this is wrong, wrong, wrong. Okay. Uh, it passes through its own digital ledger technology and it does it within three seconds. And there is literally hardly any price movement within three seconds, which Ripple basically said, if it moves the price, we compensate anyone for that. How long can a price move? You know, I mean, three seconds you've got, but if you're using Ethereum or Bitcoin or Ethereum Classic, you know, it's 10 minutes, right? For the price to move or even longer, right? You know, the settlement of Bitcoin or Ethereum, you never know how long it's going to settle. When they're busy, it could take up to 48 hours, right? So again, you know, the price moving within three seconds is just irrelevant. You know, price moving in three seconds, how quickly can a price move? I know markets, but I can tell you something now. If you're using Ethereum and Bitcoin and waiting for a settlement, of up to 48 hours, the price can move a hell of a lot within 48 hours, okay? That's a fact. Now, the thing is, the o ODL system you know, basically is providing tight markets. And that's what they're talking about, tight liquid markets for pricing. So if someone overseas, you know, they don't have, you know, many uh, price makers overseas, then they're not going to have a market somewhere overseas if they don't have price makers there. It's like, you know, it's like the US dollar, US yen, for example. It's the most traded foreign exchange in the world. But if you're in some small place somewhere else, you know, in the middle of two buck two, and you're trying to get a tight price for US yen, then you may not be able to get it because there's hardly any people that trade US yen. You know, you have a dealer panel, you have price makers, you have price makers that can take the other side. And this is what Brad Garlinghouse is talking about more than anything, right? The price makers, who can you know, take the other side, the buy and the sell or vice versa. You know, there's hardly any price volatility within XRP because it takes three seconds to settle XRP. What sort of price volatility would you expect for three seconds? Get real, honestly. So then we go into this thing, price and demand. Um, you know, again, Brad's talking about, this is, you know, demand liquidity, right? You know, he's talking about there's not enough demand, right? And what he's talking about is, 
you know, price makers that can take the other side of a deal, right? On both sides of the transaction. It's got nothing to do with, you know, the buy sell spread has to be as tight as tight for it to be liquid. You know, the thing is, he's basically saying Ripple and XRP need more price makers in the market, you know, to make it incredibly liquid so that someone can take the other side. You know, if you're talking about volume, for example, someone that has, wants to do 100 million of XRP dollars worth or 10 million or 20 million, then, you know, they need an over-the-counter price maker. No different to if we're talking foreign currency or if we're talking equities or bonds or anything else, right? Now, in the bond market, for example, you could trade 5 million with no problem, right? But if you decided to do 150 million worth of bonds, you would have to get a separate price for that, right? Because being lifted in 150 million of bonds is going to give you a different price. And that's what Brad Garlinghouse is talking about here. And I just think this has been interpreted completely wrong because people don't understand financial markets, right? And that's a fact. Um, you need price makers. They need a dealer panel. XRP and Ripple need a dealer panel to make markets in XRP all over the world, right? And that's what Brad Garlinghouse is talking about, a dealer panel. So as they continue to expand globally, they need dealer panels all over the world to make big prices on large amounts, right? Um, not big prices, but what I'm saying is, you know, reasonable prices on large amounts. Now, in the foreign currency market, you know, say the bid offer spread for uh, US yen, you know, might be one pip, one point you know, for up to, say, 50 million. But if someone came along and did half a billion of US yen, the price maker would give them a different price that wouldn't be one point uh, spread between the buy and the sell. The price maker for the risk, because they're being lifted in US yen, someone's buying US against the yen, and say if it was a billion, for example, the price maker would give them a spread, you know, of 30 points right? 30 points rather than one point, because suddenly the price maker, like uh, Ripple's treasury, has been lifted in 150 billion or 100 billion of, of uh, US yen. You see what I'm saying? And that this is pretty much what this is talking about, okay? Um, you know, they need more price makers for the bigger transactions, right? And, and that's the thing, the bigger the transactions, you know, the wider the spread for the risk of the price maker that's getting lifted in a very large transaction, right? It's okay when we're talking about, you know, things under 20 million US or something, but if we're talking about a hundred bill plus, you know, uh, the price maker's getting lifted in a hundred bill plus, just like if an exchange was getting listed or if Ripple's treasury was getting lift, lifted in a hundred billion plus, right? So I think people just completely understand, you know, what this article is saying, right? Um, yes, we know that it's been stagnant because people don't understand RippleNet or XRP for that matter. And there's been so much FUD out there that people just believe this crap, seriously. And it is garbology, absolute garbology. I have to say garbology. And, you know, fair income, I just get absolutely sick of it. Because people interpretate stuff and they don't understand how financial markets work. They just don't. And then this article goes on to say that there was also concern at the company about the right reliability of the overall market data. Uh, Ripple's been selling XRP relative to reported volumes. That is garbology. Honestly, that is garbology. Ripple can be sued for that, okay? It's got nothing to do with what coin market cap print. A matter of fact, coin market cap prints some erroneous data, which I sent them, you know, uh, many emails about about IOTA. You know, IOTA should be the market cap should be a lot higher because one million IOTA equals one myota. 
It's got nothing to do with Ripple and XRP, but the way this is read, read is like it's a, a you know Ripple and XRP's uh, intention to mislead you know users, right? And this is just wrong. It's wrong again. It's wrong. You know that the escrow now is a lot less than fifty five billion. It comes in and out every month, and what doesn't get sold goes back to escrow. Uh, first in, last out. This is totally wrong. Why do they write this like it's Ripple and XRP doing it? You know, when they when they're not, they would be sued. Their directors of the company would be sued, right? You know, liquidity, yes, is important, and of course, he focuses on liquidity. That's understandable. But again, you know, we're talking large deals, then the bid offer spread between the buy and the sell is going to widen, okay? And that's the issue, right? That's the issue. And what he's saying is they need price makers in the market that can price big deals, that can go back to Ripple's treasury and price big deals and make markets where there isn't you know, a market for XRP, right? There might be, there may not be any market for XRP. There may not be an exchange set up for XRP in, you know, Lebanon or something. You know what I'm saying? And that's the whole point. Uh, again, now he goes on, this guy goes on about, did Ripple create XRP? Christ, I mean, seriously. No, this is old news and old FUD. So what? I mean, you know, what's that got to do with the price of anything? Seriously, this is just crap, what he's saying. It's garbology. You know, we've been over this. Jed McCallop, you know, literally copied Ripple's technology, right, and created Stella, which is a really bad copy of Ripple, you know? Um, this is all crap, honestly. So what? I mean, it's garbology, man. You know, absolute crap. You know, this was years ago. This is absolutely irrelevant. And about and apart from that, Ripple wasn't mined. It was created. You know, XRP was created by, you know, computer language and a program. So, you know, then this guy goes on about the critics, you know, and again, another, oh, Christ, Tony Vase, give me a break. That guy is no trader in my book. He's got no experience I mean, look at this guy on LinkedIn. Seriously, it's a joke. That guy is a Bitcoin maximalist. He's going to slam Ripple and XRP until the day he dies. He's completely obsessed with just slamming them at every minute and saying they're a scam. The reality is if they were a scam, they would be sued from here to Timbuktu. They have millions and millions of clients. I would not listen to this guy and it's just he is so biased and so wrong it just makes me irate, okay? This article is so, so biased and negative, I want to scream, right? You know, we know about these class actions. It's it's the same story. You know, a client wants to make out it's a security so they get reimbursed from Ripple because they lost money. That's the risk of the cryptocurrency market. But it's not a security, right? It's a, it's a utility and it's completely old news, right? We even had other, you know, pre, uh, can, um, US government officials say that it's a utility. Give me a break on this. It's just, again, printing more and more garbology that we've read over for exhaustion in the last, you know, three or four or five years. Seriously. Um, it's just... You know, again, you can find anyone to say anything, honestly, and I'm just really, you know, really seriously over it because RippleNet adds the value with the utility of XRP, okay? And that's a fact. If you don't use XRP, you don't get 30 cents saving in the dollar, right, as a minimum internally. And if you use it externally, you save 70% in the dollar. Get your facts right, man. Get your facts right. You know, this is just annoying me now, really annoying me, seriously. Um, you know, this is all old news, man, all old news, fair dinkum. You know, seriously, what else does it say here? Just so annoying. You know, again, this, yeah, exactly, there's 5,500 cryptocurrencies in circulation. And you know what? 
The only one that they focus on is XRP. Why? Because the thing works and it's the best cryptocurrency out there. But they don't focus on, you know, scams out there. And there's probably out of that figure, 5,500, 98% of them scams. And they don't focus on things where they just don't work. And there's hacks like Ethereum Classic. And you know what? It gets hacked three times in August. And you know what the price does? It goes up. Seriously, give me a break. Honestly, this market is so stupid. And, you know, most of the stuff that I read about Ripple and XRP is just garbology, okay? Garbology. And take it with a grain of salt, fair income. Honestly, I'm just ugh, so frustrated with this. You know, I'm just so frustrated with this. Um, then it re reads the rest of it. But I hope I've answered that question. Look, I'm having a live YouTube on, you know, um, Sunday, uh, CET time at seven o'clock. So please, you know, come and ask questions. I will answer away because I know the market. I know what's going on. I've been around for a long time and I know what Brad Garlinghouse was talking about. Whereas people just take it as being totally negative and it's not. It's not. They've got so much demand. They need more price makers out there to price up you know, larger deals for Christ's sake. And that's pretty much it, you know. And XRP is the best cryptocurrency out there. Focus on, you know, all the scams out there. No, it's probably too much work for all these, you know, all these people that write, you know, news articles about Ripple because it's a lot easier and they can just, they can basically just follow everyone else's crap. And again, you know, all these DeFi's, you know, how expensive they are and half of them, or more are scams, absolute scams. You know, CZ said it from Binance, you know, Craig Wright, who I don't like from BSV, Satoshi's, uh, Bitcoin Satoshi Vision said the same thing. But I can tell you right now, there are so many scams in that place, but no one talks about them, right? No one. And it's just this FUD and FUD and FUD. And I'm, I'm pretty much sick of it. But anyway, look, join me for live. Uh, YouTube on the 6th of September and I'll answer all your questions guys and girls anyway it's Susie uh, crypto acca crypto granny I'm really cranky as a granny now anyway I'll talk to you very soon thank you